Hello everyone, this is Ether Dragon, and welcome back to another episode of Fire Emblem Heroes. So, unfortunately, this Ether Raids match was during the time where I still had a sore throat, and so I couldn't live commentate, but I recorded this because I, was, I did a pretty big stunt, and I thought I knew how everything was going to go down, but then I missed one thing, and well, as, if you're familiar with what happens when... That happens in this series. <laughs> Things don't go too well. So, most of the units lightly merged, but the big thing here I'll just mostly be talking about is this Elowit here because he's really the main reason why everything just was super tough in general. Besides the fact their infantry school is level 5, maxed out for minus 6 to all stats against infantry units. So, basically, Pretty heavy counter to me, and of course Hardy Bearing does not help me at all. Blazing Durandal definitely does not help me out here. And well, as you can see, I'll show the builds in a bit, but all you need to know is Sue has Fire Sweep Bow with Poison Strike 6, you know, double Poison Strike Panic Plus on Maribel, and just the usual shenanigans. So, and Gravity Plus on Brave Veronica, which was is pretty cool, I would say. Um, unfortunately, with Peony, I couldn't do any fancy plays starting on the right side, so I had to come up with something pretty creative, and I... Man, man, did I make something pretty creative. So, all you need to know is that Elowid in this frame here is being debuffed on my level 1 Bright Shrine, so he actually has 55 attack and 38 speed. There's Hone Cavalry on Sue, and Panic. he's not in range of my Panic Manor, so we couldn't exploit that. So I had to look at different means, and so because of the way the AI works, my plan was where Peony is right now, if I, no matter where I place any of my other units on the map, in range of Maribel, she would get attacked by Maribel. And so my plan was to use that fact, because uh, Maribel would do the most damage to Peony, that's the only reasoning behind that. And so, because of that, I could redirect the panic away from Nino, and so I could keep Nino buffed up and be able to 1v1 this Elowid. And so this Elowid has dull close, of course, to deal with all the melee things. A lot of people do not do not tech against ranged close counter strategies, close counter vantage strategies too much. Of course, there's hardy bearing here, so that hurts a lot, as you'll see. But at, at the end of the day, we just, we just gave it our best shot. They really... I probably could have won the match by doing some tactical sacks, but I was doing it for the for all the, all the biscuits. <laughs> it was an all in play. So So with 55 attack, my plan was to just take out Sue. And so that would allow um attack smoke to go off and drop Elowood's attack to 48. And so there's no other attack buff, so he's going to have 57 attack against Nino on his first engagement and Nino uh, when buffed with plus six defense and well debuffed by infantry school would only have 30 defense so she would take still you know quite a bit of damage um, 27 and with the way I had things set up she was gonna get Plus six to all. Oh, well, she's gonna get the Fort Res four, you know, defense tactic and attack tactic, and then Peony's plus three speed from Gentle Dream. And so, overall, Nino had, I believe, oh my gosh, I'm blanking, uh, I believe 83 attack. So, 83 attack against red units like Elowid is, I believe. Uh, I just blanked. <laughs> 10 out of 10. Uh, let's, wait, no, wait, I forgot to factor in infantry school and stuff. So that 83 attack, was it 83? 
I'm so blanking right now. So it's, yeah, 83. So 83 gets debuffed to 77 from the infantry school. I think there was chill attack as well. So that was 76 attack. And so 76 attack against Elowood is 61 attack. So as you can see there, that's a clean two shot, 24 times two. There aren't any heals, healing specials or methods of healing for Elowood during a phase. So I calculated there, I had the two shot potential after he got danced. I just had to see, can I live two hits from the guy? And so I computed the damage, you know, 48 attack on Elowood. Um, from the first engagement, 57 against Nino, so 27 damage. And then I calculated, you know, she does 24 damage. So I figured, you know, with the noontime proc, then she would, because it would be at one cooldown, so when he attacks, you know, I would get noontime, right? And, well, that's, that's the mistake, if you haven't figured that out already. But we'll keep on going with the calculations here to show my reasoning. And so at this point, doing 24 damage heals 7 with noontime. So overall, the damage becomes like 20, so Nino's at 41 HP. And then Ella, when we get Dance, he has his full 55 attack, so you do 36 damage. AKA, he would not kill. And I would get the kill back on that. And so Nino would have 5 HP left. And with 4... It, it would just... It was... I'm going to actually check because I didn't fully calc out the matchup here. Yeah, there was chill attack. But it was mostly just this Veronica here with Gravity Plus. Um, that was going to be the main issue afterwards with uh, 54 attack, probably. So, the 54 attack, there's also the Panic Manor and the Tactics Room. Pretty rough matchup for me. But, uh, we just do this here. Buff up Nino with Gentle Dream here. And break the Panic Manor for the following turn. Plop Caden over here to buff Peony. So Nino here has 51 or 45 res. And then in Brazen Range we'll have 52. So against that Veronica. If we can go back to the Veronica real quick. It's 100% totally professional recording. That 54. So... <laughs> So basically, she would be short on the kill on Nino you know, by one if I did my calculations correctly. So it was all like set to be good. Um, the only other thing would be that I'm getting hit by a chill speed. And so, and of course, infantry school. So even if I got rid of the chill speed somehow, there was still infantry school to deal with. So it's like, you know, uh, her odds of actually staying alive were not great. But I'm I'm pretty sure she could have lived um, if it went off. Of course, the problem with this entire thing is I forgot the part of Blazing Durandal that, you know, has a special... It's like kind of like special fighter, but player phase only. And so, yeah, we're not going to proc that noontime, even though it's at one cooldown. So as you'll see here, we're going to get two shot by Elowood, and it's going to be sad. But there's the panic attack from Maribel as predicted. And, well, Ripperinos. And it's just going to go downhill from here. It was for all the biscuits because the guy is Gale Force, and we're going to counter him. So it was a guaranteed proc, and my not plus 10 air goes down to race in there. And it's basically over, but at this point, I just did some random derping around just to see give myself some time to talk about the matchup in the post commentary so yeah unfortunately at this point there's nothing i can do to win the matchup racing's just too fast we can't pick up the kill on him and you know there's still leanne there to dance and stuff and there's gravity it's and bright shrine it's just not going to end well there's still chill speed i believe as well so there's just absolutely nothing we can do here unfortunately so i just do the play where we take out maribel and then take out Elowood with peony because the damage works out that way after the dagger debuff so 
decide to just go for it and well at that point it's just a rip nothing we can do about it this is too much too much damage and uh, at the end of the day that one miscalculation cost me but of course if their infantry school wasn't leveled up all the way like that we definitely would have lived with the extra six defense on Nino and things should have still worked out okay I believe for sure but didn't work out that way not even heavily merged team you know if this team was max merged I wouldn't be able to probably make that play because the healers would do too much damage but uh yeah at the end of the day this person just got a win for me because uh well not much you can do if uh risk the biscuit all in play <laughs> i figured i would show this video just as another example of the derpy things i do on ether raids offense but anyways that's going to be it for this episode thanks for watching as always this is ether dragon and hope to see you all next time bye